Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a colder pattern for the eastern and central United States. This is part one, uh, part two out of two uh, for this couple of videos that we're doing on this topic. Uh, yesterday's video, uh, of course, was talking more about the surface temperatures. And today we're going to be talking more about the upper air maps, the teleconnections, things like that. Now, disclaimer, this video is being pre-recorded. Uh, right now I'm recording this on Tuesday evening, uh, but this is not going to be uploaded until uh, until Wednesday, of course. Uh, that's only because I'm not able to do my regularly scheduled uh, video, which I would normally do in the afternoons after school, uh, because I'll be busy at that point. So... I'm not going to be able to uh, even come home and make a video afterwards because it'll be too late anyway. So uh, I'm just going to pre-record this one. Either way, the information is not going to change a lot from now uh, when I'm recording this to when you guys are watching it. So there's not going to be a huge difference uh, either way. So hopefully not too big of an issue uh, there. Uh, if you do have any questions or comments, just leave a comment down below and I'll be responding within a few hours of you posting that. So let's get right into it and let's start off with your current weather photo of the day this one was sent in by steve uh, from central maryland uh, and this was actually back in october 30th 2004 so uh, he sent that in uh, again uh, yesterday we had a very recent one which was taken on monday morning so uh, that was yesterday's weather photo of the day from trevin in north platte nebraska he was showing the snowfall from that recent snowstorm and now we're getting from steve a picture rack from 2004 really all uh the only criteria is that it has to be somewhat related to the weather so even if you have some older pictures of the of some weather events that you want to send in uh feel free to do do so and i'll feature them uh, of course i will feature the more recent ones first uh so so uh, if, if there is a vi uh, there's if there is a photo about uh, let's say a snowstorm that happened just a couple days ago, I'm going to feature that one before uh, a photo like this one. But of course, I am going to still feature every single one that does get sent in. So. Uh, thank you to Steve for sending this one in. Again, this is from Central Maryland, uh, and you can see some of those cobwebs getting some dew on them. So uh, the spider webs uh, getting a little bit of moisture on them. I'm assuming this was probably during a bit of a humid stretch. Uh, you have the very vibrant green leaves all over the place, uh, and it is cool to see how strong and sticky these uh, spider webs are. They really can have anything stick to them, uh, and that includes water. So you can kind of see them dripping down or kind of pooling up. Up in the middle uh, where all that moisture is being kind of stuck there so uh, thank you to Steve for sending that in if you guys have any more pictures that you want to send in uh, it does not have to be a current weather event uh, it could be a picture like this just maybe some cool leaves uh, something cool that you notice somewhat related to the weather uh, a cool cloud sunrise sunset or again snow rain uh, ice pictures that you have definitely send them in with a general location so like steve did uh just a general area so it does not have to be a town it could just be something like central maryland it does not have to be anything specific just a general area uh of what part of the state you're from so uh let's start talking about the upper air maps because this is going to be the main point of today's video now we're going to be going through the 500 millibar map and then we'll look at the teleconnections later on in the video starting it off for today you can see that we have some rather chilly temperatures coming in from central and northern Canada and that's creating a fairly big trough into the east so we have colder temperatures comp uh, compressing over uh, the eastern United States and we have warmer temperatures rising up uh, throughout the west so overall a fairly interesting uh, pattern what we're going to see is that we're going to have low pressure move in from the Pacific and move on to the northwestern United States and we're going to see this low pressure move out further to the east as well so we'll start to warm up by next week uh, so the week after this one but uh, the week after that will probably be colder again so we're going to have kind of four days of warmer temperatures and then maybe followed by five or six days of colder temperatures that's generally how this is going to work for the next few uh, weeks and days now moving this on to thursday uh, you can see that we have colder temperatures still in the east generally because we have a trough there uh, we also have some troughing right along the pacific northwest and moving that along you can see that that troughing uh, in the east starts to kind of slim a little bit uh, we would actually have some warmer temperatures along the southeast coast so uh, for areas like Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, these areas would be getting 
in on some warmer temperatures uh, because you would have actually a southwesterly wind. Meanwhile, anywhere else in the southeast, you would have generally a northwesterly or a neutral uh, wind pattern, which would indicate that you would have some colder temperatures uh, in general. Same thing with the northeast. You would have warmer temperatures along uh, the, much the majority of the northeast, but watch out for areas like Nova Scotia or even Cape Cod could get stuck in this southwesterly breeze, uh, which could warm up those temperatures uh, by a couple degrees. Degrees. Now moving this on to Saturday, you can see that we have a little trough up into Minnesota and Wisconsin, so that might lower temperatures slightly, but generally we're going into a bit more of a pattern of ridging uh, just for a couple days. Again, we're going to quickly go back into a colder pattern. You can also see that in the southeast we have uh, some troughing and a little low pressure system in the Big Bend of Florida. Uh, so that might bring in a little bit of cooler temperatures, but also some rain as well. The northwest is also dealing with some precipitation and uh, colder temperatures uh, due to that trough, which is moving into uh, the western United States. Moving this on, uh, it will actually be a potentially chilly day if you live uh basically from Michigan on eastward because you'll have a westerly or northwesterly wind, uh, which means that you're coming in from a colder angle, uh, and you're also going to have probably along some of these areas along coastal New England as well as for uh, coastal Canada, uh, you might get in on some warmer temperatures with that nice southerly breeze but just because you're under that orange color does not necessarily mean you're going to be warmer same thing with the blue color does not mean that you're necessarily going to be colder this is just indicating where you have low and high pressure and in most times that is going to correlate but in some scenarios like this you would actually have a colder pattern in the along the east coast because of the wind direction so i, I feel like the wind direction is important uh a little bit more than just the colors represented on this map so some people get caught up with uh well i'm in the blue shading I'm in the deep red shade really that's not all that important uh, you could be in a deep red shade but if you have uh, uh, your colder temperatures and your uh, source of air coming in from northern Canada it really doesn't matter because Either way, uh, you will be on the colder side of things. Moving this on to, wet, to actually Monday, you can see that it's colder in the west and warmer in the east. Uh, and that would actually continue probably until Wednesday or Thursday of next week before it would actually cool down again in the east. Now, here's a look at what it uh, looks like for Wednesday. Uh, well, this is actually before today uh, and looking at the next five days. So the next five day average from today all the way until Sunday, uh, would you would be looking at fairly chilly temperatures as a whole. So again, this is a five day average. And you can see that for a majority of the east, we're dealing with temperatures that are going to be about four to six degrees below normal Celsius, which is equivalent to about uh, eight to, I would say, 12 or 13 degrees Fahrenheit uh, below the average. Here's a look at the Arctic oscillations. So we're not going to start to talk about some of these oscillations because they are definitely important to how the pattern is actually going to shape up. Uh, you can see that we do have the Arctic oscillation, which is going to be hovering right around neutral, not really going to be too far above or below uh, that line at any one given point, which means that you are going to be dealing with a fairly volatile, not may maybe not volatile, but definitely a, uh, a, a Polar vortex that could definitely move and shift uh, when you have one or two little systems that impact it. So it's not going to be all the way uh, in that positive territory, maybe near three or four. In that case, it would be a lot more of a uh, warmer pattern, most likely, because you would not have too much cold air sinking to the south. But in this scenario, even if it's a, a maybe one standard deviation above or below the mean, not going to have a huge impact. This just means that we have availability for some cold air. So uh, if it was negative, of course, that would probably indicate more of a colder pattern. But in this case, it's more of just a neutral pattern. We're probably going to go in and out of some colder temperatures. Now, here's the NAO. Now, something interesting is that the NAO, uh, again, was quite negative, and then it started to kind of just linger around that neutral territory, uh, and that's going to continue at least until probably the 5th or the 6th before it does dip down maybe a little bit more and then hover around uh, neutral to maybe uh, one standard deviation below the mean. So, 
We're not going to be too far above or below here with the NAO as well. The NAO, by the way, stands for the North Atlantic Oscillation. It covers the height anomalies, uh, uh, the height anomalies uh, for the areas south of Greenland. And typically, if you want cold and snow in the eastern United States, you would want this to be negative or at least near neutral. And in this case, we're not dealing with it positive. Really, the only thing that I look for is for this to not be positive. And if it's not positive, then you have a chance at some cold air. So uh, unless this is really in a a deep uh, a deep positive state we're not really too worried about this oscillation and then the pna this is the one that i look at personally the most because this is going to be most important out of all of them the, the arctic oscillation again you still need a few other things to fall into place for that one to really be useful the nao as well you still need a few other things to fall into place but the pna can really dictate this and it can actually set the stage for even if you have a positive pna there's a fairly high chance that you're going to have a negative NAO. So they're kind of correlated in that way. You don't see it too often where you have a negative PNA and a negative NAO as well, or a positive PNA and a positive NAO. Uh, they or uh, they really don't go uh, together. You usually have one or the other. So a positive PNA, uh, which is the Pacific North American Index, stands uh, it basically is the western third of North America. So that's the western U.S., western Canada, Alaska, the eastern Pacific, uh, and it just covers the height anomaly. So, of course, if it is a higher height anomaly, if it's all the way at the upper top of the scale like it was just a couple days ago, and then we're going to be in a colder pattern uh, because in the eastern United States, if it's warm out in the west, there's a fairly high chance that it's fairly cold uh, in the east. So uh, you really want to look at the PNA. If this is negative, there's a fairly good shot that the east is going to be the warm one. So uh, you can see that when that trough moves on to the west coast, which is going to be around the 5th, 6th, 7th, uh, is gonna, you're going to actually be maybe near neutral in terms of the height anomalies. And then once that moves into the central United States, it's starts to wobble its way back up positive, which is good news for those of you who like the cold and snow. So that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Again, this was a pre-recorded uh, video. I am uh, recording this on uh, Tuesday evening. So again, this is not the most up-to-date information, but by the time you guys are seeing this, it's only about 18 hours after I'm recording this. Actually, yeah, it would be around 18 hours after I'm recording this. So not a lot is going to change, especially uh, with the fact that I decided to make the longer range one, the height anomalies, the oscillation video as part two. Uh, so that means that we're not going to have as much fluctuation. If I were to make the surface one as part two, that would be a little bit, uh, a little bit more uh, volatile. You'll probably see a little bit more change in the surface maps, but in terms of the upper air maps, really not a lot changes. So I think most of this should be valid for tomorrow uh, by the time that you guys are going to be seeing this. So sorry if that's a little bit of a disturbance to you guys. Uh, I'm going to still upload this around the normal time that I would usually do it. Uh, so again, that is going to wrap it up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you want to send in your weather photos, send them over to my email address, which is EliTheWeatherGuyYT at gmail.com. It's also in the description down below. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Goodbye.